Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at how we will multiply and divide algebraic fractions so we can answer questions from exercise 1b. So hopefully this is just a bit of revision from GCSE, shortcuts in how to multiply and divide algebraic expressions. So um, what we've got here, let's just go through an example with numbers just to start with. Um, if you're doing one half times three fifths, you just do top times top bottom times bottom. So 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 5 is 10. Um, and in general, if we've got A over B times C over D, it's top times top, bottom times top, bottom. So it's AC over BD. Um, in this case here, what we can do, if it's 3 over 5 times 3 over 9, the way we can simplify this is, um, well, we can times them to start with. So 3 times 5 is 15 and 5 times 9 is 45. Cancel down the common multiples of 15 on the top and bottom and we get one third. Okay, so in addition, so you could do it this way or also it is also possible to simplify a sum before you work it out. Um, this will be vital in harder algebraic questions. So for example, if we were to do this 3 fifths times 5 ninths again, what we could do is effectively swap these two over, it's not going to affect the question in any way. All it's going to do is allow us to cancel down these fractions before we get started multiplying. Now you're not always going to be able to swap them over, but just think about them swapping over. So the fives will cancel out, threes will cancel out from the right hand fraction, so we'll be left with one third, so it's one times a third equals a third. Okay, so going back to this question up here, what we can do is we can cancel out diagonally effectively if we think about the 5 and the 3 switching positions because 1 is effectively going to be a numerator multiple and 1 is going to be a denominator multiple. We can cancel out across here to leave a 3 on the bottom here so your answer is just 1 third. So for example if we've got a over b times c over a we think about these two a and c swapping over but we don't swap them over all we do is we cancel them out um, to leave us just with C over B. Okay, question E here, right, uh, we've got a X plus one and an X squared minus one on the bottom of the right hand fraction. <clears throat> now what you might have to do with some algebraic expressions is factorize them. So in this case here, if you remember X squared minus one will simplify to, or factorize into X plus one, X minus one, and now we can cancel out the X plus ones on the top and bottom to leave us just with a final answer of 3 over 2x plus 1, x minus 1. Okay. So for dividing fractions, there is just one extra step that you have to follow for dividing fractions, and that is to flip the second fraction and multiply. So the way we would do this is we multiply instead, and we flip the second fraction. So now it's 5 times 3 over 6 times 1, we could probably cancel out 3's from the top and bottom to leave us with 5 over 2. So it's flip the second fraction and times. So in this case here, if we've got a over b divided by a over c, then we flip the second fraction and multiply, so it's going to be c over b. In this case here, we're going to need to do a lot of factorising because bits will cancel out. Not only will you have to notice how to factorise a quadratic, but you also may um, have to factorise just a, a factor of three out of the um, out of an expression like the top right hand expression here. So three x plus six will simplify into three brackets x plus two. And what we can do is we can times and flip the second fraction. And in the same step, if you wanted to, or in separate steps, we can factorise the right-hand fraction. The left-hand fraction doesn't factorise, but if it did, we would factorise it. And now we can spot um, multiples either up and down in, in between a single fraction, or diagonally as well, on a numerator and a denominator. As long as you're always cancelling out a numerator and a denominator expression, you're fine. So cancel out an x plus 2 and cancel out an x plus 4, and all we're left with is x minus 4 over 3. So sometimes very complicated questions can simplify very well, much neater than they previously were. 
All right then, your turn to have a go at these four questions here then to get some practice in. Pause the video, try these out and come back afterwards to get the answers. All right then, let's go through question 2a. Now we've got here x plus 2 and it's not a fraction. Now what we, what we can always do is if we've got an expression that's not a fraction, we can always write it as a fraction over 1. So effectively think of this as over 1. And on the right hand side we can factorise the quadratic on the bottom to x plus 2, x minus 2. Cancel out the x's here and here. And all you're left with is your final answer, which is 1 over x minus 2. 1 times x minus 2 is just x minus 2. For the second question up here, let's do a bit of factorising to get started. So x bracket x minus 3. And on the bottom it's going to be y bracket y plus 1. Times y plus 1 over x. And let's look at cancelling out a denominator and a numerator term. So we've got x's here and here. 1 is a numerator, 1 is a denominator. And we've got y plus 1, 1 is a numerator, 1 is a denominator. So all we've got left then is x minus 3 times 1, which is x minus 3, over y times 1, which is just y. When you've cancelled out on a fraction the whole top or the whole bottom, effectively what you're left with there is 1, not 0. Okay, so don't make the mistake of putting a 0 there. Okay, for the third question here, question 2d, what we're going to need to do here is times and flip the second fraction. So it's going to be multiply. I'm going to flip this fraction upside down. But let's factorise along the way as well. So x plus 1, x plus 3 or y, sorry, and then on the bottom here it's just going to be y squared. Now in this case here, if we cancel out a y from the top and bottom here, we're effectively just cancelling out one of the y's from the bottom of the right-hand side, which is fine, and we cancel out y plus 3's from the top and bottom of the left-hand bottom and right-hand top. So all we're left with here is y plus 1 over y. Now this is as simple as it gets. You cannot cancel down a y from this expression here. If you think about it, if you've got um, something like 4 plus 1 over 4, so y is representing the number 4 here, and you cancel down 4s here, you've suddenly turned 5 over 4 as a fraction into a 1 over 0 fraction, which is impossible. So please never cancel out just terms that are being added together on the top or bottom. They always have to be a factor, a multiple of the top or bottom. And for the fourth question here, let's factorise and times and flip the second fraction. So 2x plus 5, 2x minus 5. The difference of two squares is a very popular um, question that they can include here. And on the bottom as well, we can also factorise this by pulling out a 2. So this will help us with a factor uh, on the top. And on the, uh, on the second fraction here, we're going to flip it the other way around. So 8 over 2x plus 5. So this is going to simplify quite significantly. We've got 2x plus 5 on the top and bottom here. We've got 2x minus 5 on the top and bottom here. And we've got a factor of 2 on the top and the bottom here. So all we've got left with on the bottom here is 1. Top here is just 1. Bottom here is just 1. So it's effectively 1 over 1 times 4 over 1, which is just an answer of 4. OK, so that's how we do these sorts of questions here then. So hopefully that was a bit of revision, but if you do need some practice there, there are plenty of questions on page 6, exercise 1b. I do suggest you have a go at this before moving on because it's going to get a lot harder later on in this chapter. Thanks very much for watching.